Good morning. Hope everyone's having an amazing day today. I am Justin Greathouse. This is my morning walk. Thank you for joining me. If this is your first time joining me, this is just me going on my morning walk, talking to you about some things that I'm either learning, thinking about, listen to, read, uh, anything kind of like that. So if this is your first time joining me, then uh, basically, like I said, this is just my morning walk. You're gonna hear some background noise. There's gonna be some camera shake as I'm moving around. I will be looking around both at the road because I am walking on the road and also at my notes. So I will be looking to make sure I don't get hit by cars. And yeah, so let's get to walking. Um, so yesterday I was listening to a podcast with um, Ed Milet and uh, Sadhguru, and it was a very, very interesting, very good perspective on the idea of the pursuit of happiness versus actually being happy. And so um, a takeaway was that a lot of us spend a lot of our focus and our time and our attention on the pursuit of happiness, which causes a lot of stress, anxiety, and depression when you either don't meet that pursuit, um, you don't reach where you think that you should be, or for a lot of people, when they do reach those goals, uh, the big issue for a lot of people is as soon as they reach that goal or they reach that uh, thing that they've attached their happiness to, then they don't have a mission anymore, they don't have a purpose, um, and so they're they're unhappy and depressed. That's why you see a lot of people that have built big businesses or that are very wealthy are very unhappy, depressed, down. It's because a lot of times they have attached a lot of their own personal happiness, personal self-worth to that thing that they're trying to accomplish when they accomplish it. They don't have anything left. Um, you see this a lot in the military too. When you're in the military, you have a very defined purpose. You have a very clear goal and an outset and objective and very clear measures as to if you're meeting that or not. Um, and so what you'll see a lot of times is people will be meeting that and they'll be happy and they know their mission, they know their objective and they get out of the military and they lose that sense of purpose and then that's where things start to fall apart and that's why we have so many issues with mental health people being in the military is because they don't find another mission or a purpose once they get out um, and I, I I was in the military so I can kind of understand that I, I wasn't a, a combat military person so my my objective and my goals while I was in were different things I experienced while I was in were different so I can't speak as much to that side of things as I can just the the mentality of being in the military but I have listened to a lot of things about people and their lack of mission when they get out and read a lot of books and, and that stuff so it's definitely a serious problem and not something that's easy to overcome um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, you just, you know, help people or you find your mission um, as soon as you get out, you know? Well, it's not that easy. I would say even while I was in, well, I knew the military's mission. It wasn't like my life's mission. And so even now in my mid thirties, I'm still not a hundred percent on what my life's mission is, but I have ideas as to what I, think it is or what I think it should be and so as at least as of right now I'm taking steps towards those dreams um, and if things change then I can pivot but I have a target and that keeps my my headspace clear so um, anyway let's hop into some of my notes um, when I first started thinking about this I thought it was going to be a really short and quick video um, but then I started writing my notes down 
and I filled up an entire page uh, pretty much instantly. So I guess I have a lot to say or I have a lot of thoughts on this subject. So um, first thing is that studies have shown that your happiness is based on circumstance only about by 10%. So most of your happiness is determined by you. What you're going through only plays a very tiny role. Um, but that's not how we view it. Most of the time, we allow that 10% circumstance to dictate 100% of our mental health, our attitude, what we're thinking. Um, and that's just not a good way to go about things because it's such a small influence, such a small amount on you, you've got more control than that. So take control of your own happiness. Um, it needs to be an internal thing, not an external thing. And I'll be talking about that a bunch kind of throughout the course of this. So you have the power within yourself to find your own joy. Um, and this can mean a lot of different things. You can be focused on gratitude. You can be um, focused on your own joy, focused on bliss, whatever you kind of think would be a good thing for you to focus on, um, whatever word you want to attach to it, then you can do that. I mean, it's, it's all there for you and it's all, all internal. So let's see, the wind's going crazy today. So my hair and my notes are not cooperating. So like I said, it's kind of at the beginning, oftentimes we attach happiness to something external of ourselves rather than it being a, uh, internal thing it's a external so what we do is we say i'll be happy when this happens or when i achieve this or when i get to this destination or i'll be happy when i'm with this person um, and you put your happiness on somebody else which is also not fair to that other person but very common thing that you see uh, the issues with this are it's external happiness. So you're attaching your happiness to something outside of your control. Typically, um, I'll be happy when I get to this status in life. Um, while you can take actions to help get yourself along that, that journey, uh, you never know what kind of turns life can throw at you. So if you attach your happiness to, um, I'll be happy when I buy this really beautiful home in California, but then you get your dream job offer and it's in Utah. Now you can never be happy because your happiness is tied to that dream home in California. So you got to be happy with your own circumstances and just allow happiness to come to you. Um, the other side of that, when you do get what you wanted or think that you want, um, that happiness ends up being, like I said, short-lived because now you've lost your mission, you've lost your purpose, you don't know where you're trying to go with it. So you, uh, you don't want to attach your happiness to something external to yourself because either something changes and it becomes impossible to get or you do get it and that happiness is short-lived and then it's on to the next thing a big issue that a lot of people have is they don't have a big purpose they don't have a mission um, they don't have a why a reason for doing the things that they do or trying to achieve what they're trying to achieve um, and that makes it very difficult to keep focused on the things that you want to achieve and it makes it very difficult to keep a good headspace about when you're putting in all that work and all that time. Um, for me, I've got 
several big whys, but one is my family. Um, I want my kids to be able to live a vibrant life and happy and fulfilled life and to be able to explore the things they want to explore, not be stuck um, following along life's path just because they don't have a have a choice and a lot for a lot of people when you uh, for example don't have a lot of money you know you kind of take what job you can get you t live where you can live and you're kind of stuck by life's circumstances in that regard um, and that's just not a good way to live it's not a fulfilled way to live but I've been there and I understand that that's where a lot of people are and you just don't have a lot of choice. You don't have a lot of way out, um, except for to grind your way out, which is a long uphill battle that a lot of people just aren't willing to make. So I get it. I'm not trying to say that, you know, you just got to change your mindset and you'll be, you'll be rich and live wherever you want. Cause I understand it's not that easy. Um, especially when you're not doing well financially it's hard to just even see the see the light at the end of the tunnel so but it doesn't mean that it's impossible to be happy even in that circumstance you can be happy you just have to find things that you can attach your happiness to outside of your your wealth so um, a big issue with the idea of pursuit of happiness is that it feels like the pursuit of constant achievement. So a lot of people will uh, attach their happiness with things that they achieve. And then you constantly have to be achieving new things. You constantly have to be moving ahead. And eventually that becomes this, this worker bee overwork mentality, no joy out of life no time to do the things that you like and enjoy because you have to achieve more you have to make more money you have to buy that nicer house and it just it never ends so you keep taking yourself down this spiral of i need to achieve more i need to do more and it's just not a not a good place to be when you think about it so instead of focusing on your external stuff like i said focus on your your internal um, you can instead of focusing on the future focus on the present where are you at right now what is making you happy right now what joy can you find right now a lot of us spend a lot of time thinking about the future I know I certainly am guilty of this I think that anybody who's a entrepreneur or business owner it's gonna kind of be something that they resonate with because a lot of us spend a lot of our time thinking about the future, making plans, making contingency plans, making backup plans. And then uh, what we end up doing is we spend all of our time focused on what could be rather than what is. And so you get lost in the what could be and then you start thinking Worst case scenarios, then you start making yourself anxious. Uh, where if you just take a look around at where you're at, you would realize just how how amazing what you have done, what you've accomplished already is, what you've made it through. Um, even if you don't feel like it's a lot, I think that if you looked back and took retrospect of where you are now versus where you were in the past, you'd be amazed at yourself <laughs> you know talking to your talking to your younger self your younger self would be amazed at the things that you've accomplished the things you've made it through even if you don't feel like it now so another big thing is that people will focus on their past mistakes um, rather than the present so if you think about oh all these things that I've done wrong um, issues that I've ran into, things that have messed me up, things that I've messed up, then you're constantly stressed and anxious about things that are beyond your control in the past. So 
you can't change the past. No one can. That's a losing battle to try and think that you can change the past by stressing about it. So you might as well just let it go. Don't forget the lessons that you learned from the past, but don't hold on to the stress of wishing that you'd change things or the mistakes that you think that you made. So a lot of times those mistakes that you think that you made taught you the lessons that you needed to learn and got you where you needed to be at this point in time and they will get you where you need to be in the future as long as you can take those messages or those lessons on board and learn from the mistakes then you will get to where you you are destined to go however if you spend all your time focused on the mistakes and anxious and stressed about them and then thinking about the future and how doomed it is then that's the future you're going to head towards is that doomed future what your brain focuses on is what you get and you it's just no way to no way to live so another part is that we take ourselves too seriously a lot of people either stress about how far behind they are in life and how much extra they need to do to get ahead um, that's one that I'm guilty of another one is that people start to see some success and they think that they are amazing they think they're God's gift to earth and so they they take themselves too seriously and they're how come no one else works as hard as me everyone else is lazy I'm the best um, both are difficult to even recognize in yourself but both are something that can spiral you down into a dark place that you just don't want to be so the best thing is to think about um, think about life as if you were a child so when you were a kid you found joy in everything you found bliss uh, you found wonder you learned things just to learn them it wasn't about uh, going and making money for every little thing that you try to undertake um, a couple examples of people that think that they they are they're too too big to fail um, so a lot of people have this mentality when you're in a job and I noticed this from the time I was a teenager and my friends were getting jobs at McDonald's um, they swore McDonald's ran because of them and if they left that job the whole place would fall apart so they can never leave their job at McDonald's because the friends that they've made there will struggle the store won't survive all their friends will lose their jobs because they are the sole person holding it up and that's just not the case uh, every job that you've ever had when you left more than likely didn't even feel your absence at all um, you're just a blip to that job so don't don't think that you run the show um, don't think that you're so important you can't be replaced or that your absence will cause the collapse because it's just not the case um, I heard a good analogy in that podcast I mentioned earlier with Ed Milet that uh, we are all like pop-ups. So in the grand computer of life, we are just a two second little pop-up, pops up, clicked away. Uh, if you look at the just the length of time of life on this earth, even if you just look at human life on this earth, your life is such a small fraction of the existence of human life and then if you take that out to uh, how long life itself has existed on this planet you're not even a sliver on the timeline you'd have to zoom in and you're a little dot and then if you think about the universe as a whole and how long the universe has existed uh, you wouldn't even be able to locate yourself on a timeline. You're, you're that small of a, 
a little blip. Um, and some people think of that and it makes them depressed, but it shouldn't. You, you've been given precious time, but it doesn't make sense to spend that little amount of precious time stressed out about life, stressed out about how much you need to do or how much you need to accomplish or how far behind you are or the mistakes that you've made. You've got a little bit of time and you might as well make the most of it. You might as well try and be as happy as possible, be as joyful as possible, find as much bliss as possible. Um, something that I've noticed and I've started to see other people pointing out and it's kind of catching on. Um, there's this idea that everything that you do has to be for enterprise reasons. Uh, you can't just have hobbies to have hobbies. So you can't, you can't start painting unless you're going to practice and become a famous painter and sell your paintings and, and make a million dollars. Um, you can't enjoy photography unless you're going to somehow figure out how to get people to start paying you to take pictures of them or paying you for your pictures of a tree or a bird or uh, whatever it is that you enjoy taking pictures of. You just, you can't pick up photography. Um, you can't play an instrument unless you're going to be in a band and be a rock star. Most people, even the ones that learn instruments growing up, once they enter adulthood, stop playing them because you're not going to be a concert performer for your violin. So why would you ever pick up your violin and play it again? Um, but if you find joy out of playing your violin, play it. Who cares? if it's something you're going to turn into a career or a job. Um, same with sports. A lot of people stop playing sports after high school or college because their dreams of being a professional athlete are no longer there. They went a different direction, so they never play a sport again. <laughs> and that just doesn't make any sense. You found joy and love and passion in something, and when it turned out you couldn't turn it into a money-making enterprise, you stop doing it. Um, I say enjoy doing things badly. Get out there, find hobbies, don't try to make money from them, um, and go for it. So long ago, I was a photographer for a studio in Seattle, and um, I enjoyed it for a long time. But after a couple of years, I started to lose my passion for photography because I was doing it every day, day in and day out as a career. And so on weekends and time off, I used to go spend all of my free time taking photos and practicing and trying fun things. And after a while, I started to just not like photography anymore. So all of that kind of just fell off. And that's no way to, no way to live. Um, so what I ended up doing is I, I left the photography job so that I wouldn't lose my passion of photography. Uh, same with art. For a while, I started painting um, a long time ago, off and on. Um, I was never very good, so I was always like, well, I can never turn this into anything. Why bother spending the time? And then a couple years ago, I decided, who cares if I never <laughs> turn this into anything? This is for me. This is my, my time to clear my head. Um, painting is one of those things I like to do when I can't get outside to clear my head. So my, my go-to for my mental health and uh, clearing my anxiety and recharging my batteries is spending time outdoors, especially hiking if I can. But when I can't, um, when I'm stuck indoors or uh, I don't have the time, painting definitely helps me too. So, but I'm horrible at it. <laughs> but my house is filled with my paintings anyway, just because it's fun and it's something to do and I don't care if I make any money with it. So I recommend doing the same. So I've got some quick tips that I wrote down to try and uh, wrap this up together. So 
we'll see how quick they actually end up being. The first one is focus on the present. So, like I said before, the future is in the future. You can make all the plans that you want, and then uh, God will just laugh at you, change things anyway. So, focus on now. The past has already happened. Learn from your past mistakes, but don't dwell on the past. Don't think that you can change the past by constantly stressing about it. It's already happened. So focus on the present, live in the now, find joy. The next one is uh, start trying to focus on happiness or bliss or joy. Find little things throughout the day that just trigger a little emotion of happiness or a little emotion of joy and focus on them. So the more you do that, the more it becomes a habit and the more your brain programs itself to look for these little events that bring joy. One example for me is in the morning um, when I'm usually in the room working uh, on my computer doing either some of my, my social media stuff or making my plans for the day or um, any one of my little things that I try and get done first thing in the morning. My daughter, my youngest daughter, wakes up. First thing she does every morning is she comes into my bedroom and she says, good morning, daddy. And she comes in and she lays in bed with me. She gives me a hug and she puts her head on my shoulder. Um, and that is probably my happiest moment throughout the entire day. So nothing really brings me as much joy as those 30 seconds where she's, she says good morning and comes in. Um, another thing that brings me happiness and joy and gratitude is when I'm out on my morning walk, what I like to do is I like to look at the big trees swaying in the wind um, and feel the wind on my face. And even if it messes up my hair like today, I still find some happiness and some joy in just watching the trees dance with the wind and feeling the wind on my face. So find joy in little things. If you can work on that practice for 30 days, spend as much time as you can in the day noticing little things that bring you joy and happiness and trying to focus on them. Even if you only focus on them for five seconds, that'll start to program your brain towards happiness and joy. And after a month, you will be amazed at how much happier you are in your day-to-day -day life. My next one is to spend some time in nature. Um, there's lots of different things on this and I've talked about it before and it's a big important aspect to me. Um, but spending time in nature will just cleanse your, cleanse your soul, clear your mind, um, it starts to release chemicals in your brain that just cause happiness. So I know for some people it's difficult to spend much time in nature, but if you can do two hours a week, that will vastly improve your headspace and your mental health um, faster and more than you could even imagine. Uh, Sadhguru talked about it a little bit in a little bit different of a term, but basically, if you can spend time outside, walking, sitting, thinking, whatever it takes, um, just spend time noticing nature, you will be amazed at the intricacy and what's going on. He even said, compare it to an ant. Think about how much creation went into that ant to get it moving and sentient and uh, working for a greater purpose and a cause. Um, and it's this tiny little thing that you probably don't even notice when you're outside, but there's millions of ants around you. You probably don't even notice them. They're there. Uh, so take some time, get outside, notice the magnitude of what's around you and just how, how small you are in reality compared to it. Um, you'll start to notice a big changes in yourself. Uh, the next is to learn to live in gratitude. I think this is something that we've lost a lot as a society. People aren't grateful for 
the things that they have anymore. They're not grateful for the life that they've been given. Um, but you can find gratitude in anything. Grateful for a quick breeze on a morning walk. Grateful for the fact that you even get to walk at all. Um, there's some gray clouds in the sky. I don't know if you can see them. I'm grateful that it's not raining right now. <laughs> so find something to be grateful for. Start your morning with just saying thank you. Um, it can be thank you to your wife for loving you. It could be thank you just to the universe for existing. Just say thank you every morning. You'll be amazed at how fast gratitude starts to take hold in your life. Next, allow yourself to feel emotions. So this is something that I struggle with. Um, and I'm not even sure where it started, but at some point in my life, I made the decision that I was gonna be very stoic and experience muted emotion. Um, and it's something that I'm trying to work on and work against so that I can experience the joys of life. But uh, life is dictated by the depth of the emotions that you feel. And so if you don't allow yourself to feel any emotions, then you're not living your life with any depth and it's just not a way to live. So I know it's difficult, but learning to experience emotions and live with emotions will make your life deeper, richer, and more fulfilled. Um, I mentioned it a little bit before, but if you can start to look at the world like a child, the love of learning just for the sake of learning, um, the joy, the wonder in experiencing new things, the, uh, the intrigue by what the world is and is full of and capable of and how big the world is compared to how small you are, I think that you will start to live your life a lot more fulfilled. Um, that idea reminded me of some of the teachings of Nietzsche, which is another one that if you've never read his stuff there's some very interesting stuff in there um but in his his book uh thus spoke zarathustra he talks about three philosophical states that you go through as as a human experience so the first one is the camel um, and the idea of the camel is it holds on the burdens and the weight and so when you first become an adult and you think you have all this freedom and then you realize how much stuff there is for you to do and how much you have to get done uh, and how much of a struggle life can really be you, you bear all this weight and this burden of life um, and that's where most people stay most people become the camel they never break out of it and then they they just live their life there forever the second state um, which some people do break out of and I think that you could probably pick these people out uh, is the lion they've they've taken off the burden of the camel they've uh, they've created their own life values they've defined their life they're they're king of their own domain um, and this is where a lot of people aim to be they want to be the lion uh, a lot of high achievers would fall into this this category um, now there's some negative sides with Nietzsche's view of this um, at least with the way that people have interpreted this so a lot of people have interpreted the lion as I can do whatever I want I can step on whoever I want um, I can be just this jerk to everybody um, and I don't think that that's what he really meant. He meant that you've taken a look at what matters to you, what values you actually hold, and you live by those values. Um, you didn't have to just throw away everything with society and the norms of society and what's important. You, uh, you got to uh, take into account society's norms and things that don't make any sense to you, 
throw them away. Um, but things that do make sense, you keep on. You don't have to, it's not an anarchy ideology. It's a, I'm going to take a, a look in the mirror, figure out what's important to me and focus on that. Um, the third state, which very, very few people even attempt to get to, um, and a lot of the people that are going to get to that, the third state are people that you would think are more, um, not as much high achievers, more like mystic people, more uh, people that had this air of enlightenment about them. Um, but it's the uh, the state of the child. So a lot of people think that the child is like, you know, the beginning phase of life. It's this naive, uh, weak thing, something to be worked out and gotten rid of. Um, but the idea of the child is you, you focus on the wonder of life, the joy of life's experiences, the joy of learning for the sake of learning, increasing knowledge just for the sake of increasing knowledge. And you get so much more out of life by viewing it as a child rather than as a lion where everything's something to be controlled and dominated or as a camel where everything's meant to be a burden that you carry on your back. So uh, that's all that I got really for today. I recommend looking up Sadhguru or Ed Milet or Nietzsche, reading what you can, listening to what you can and growing from there. Uh, I know I really appreciate you guys joining me today. So thank you very much. If you feel like you got something out of the video or the podcast, depending on where you're tuning it in, please let us know with a, a comment or a subscribe or uh, sharing it with a friend. Help us grow. Um, if you want to connect with me, you can find me, Justin Greathouse, J-U-S-T-I-N-G-R-E-A-T-H-O-U-S-E. -E. Um, I'm at uh, Facebook, I'm on Instagram. Um, I'm also with Service First Retreats, so you can find us there. And I run a Facebook group called Getting Outdoors for my mental health. Uh, we share pictures of ourselves outside. We talk about mental health. Um, I just put out a resource for uh, digital detox with some tips about how to get started on a digital detox. Things to look out for. So check out the group. Give us a join. Check out the resource. It's, it's, it should be pinned at the top. Um, I'm not amazing with Facebook, so it might not be. But that's where I put it, so hopefully it's there. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and let me know. Or if you'd like to hear something or hear me talk about something, also let me know that. Appreciate you. Hopefully you have a great morning ahead of you, and hopefully you get a chance to get outdoors.